Um, Mr. Waters? But there's nothing to, is there something to yeah. rent? Yeah. Um, hotels are not allowed off street parking. They have to account. They, they have to accommodate their parking on site. Uh, one thing also is that the current code, as it's written today, allows 65 feet all over the downtown and the entirety of Dixie Highway. So we lower lower the heights on the eastern side, west. We would significantly lower the density, the height, the intensity of the entire city if we pass the LDRs compared to the current code that's in place today. Thank you. Ms. Mahoney? Uh, it's actually Ooh. Annabeth Preston. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I know we're both small. <laughs> <laughs> I took um, over the car, sorry. 1505 North Palm Way, um, changes to the LDRs in excess of the 40 feet. 45 foot height in the downtown corridor and the surrounding neighborhoods are in violation to the recent height limit charter amendment. Um, I believe there is no Florida statute that overrides the results of a municipal charter amendment. Ordinance 2012-30 was approved by Lake Worth voters at the March, 2000, the March 12, 2013 election. And this commission has no authority to annul the results of this election. I live 15 blocks from the downtown corridor and the height limits that were approved on March 12th are important to me because the low rise small town feeling, the old Florida character of the city of Lake Worth is important to my quality of life. These are the reasons I live here. Previously I lived in cities with tall buildings. I moved here because that's not what I want. I moved here because Lake Worth is low rise and because a low rise community offers me the quality of life that's important to me. I'm concerned about the impact of increased heights in the downtown and adjacent neighborhoods on traffic congestion for my safety when I ride my bicycle in busier traffic and on the quality and quantity of city services and my overall sense of safety. Um, I think it's interesting how the city attorney has very eloquently avoided answering Commissioner McVoy's direct question about how statute 163-3167 annuls the March 12th Charter Amendment. I did not hear any direct answer whatsoever. I would also like to clarify a comment that was made in an earlier time in this meeting. The Charter Amendment was not sent to the state. They do not have a record of the Charter Amendment. All they have is the editorial note that says that the Charter Amendment was annulled. Said several times, uh, as William just indicated, these LDRs reduce height and reduce density throughout the city, including throughout most of downtown. Um, the legislature passed the law that says these type of charter amendments that affect comprehensive plans, and this charter amendment would directly affect the conflict with the comprehensive plan, are <coughs> illegal. They're not allowed, and anyone that was passed in the past two years are null and void. That's the direct answer. Uh, in terms of the clerk, she sends the ordinances when they are completed to a notice called Unicode. They are posted. I believe the March election was sent and it was posted in a timely way. Unicode every six months or so then codifies or incorporates all of those ordinances that have been passed over the past six months and transmits them all as one codification. That then goes to the Secretary of State. And that's what occurred here. When the six month time came, both the March referendum and the June legislative action had occurred. So what Union Code received was the, as she's indicated, the editorial comment that the, what was passed has been nullified. Because at that point, it has been nullified. Uh, so even though it was posted online with Union Code back in March, um, it was codified as the correct, the change that the legislature made. And they'll find it. Okay, so that's the answer for that. Okay. Linda Mahoney, followed by Ryan Mayer. <coughs> Linda Mahoney, 325 North O Street, which is one and a half blocks from the downtown corridor, as such was defined in ordinance. Um, 2012-30, which was passed by the voters on March 12, 2013, as an amendment to the city charter, um, regardless of what action has taken place. Um, I bought my home 
1996 in close proximity to the downtown corridor um, in order to enjoy the convenience of walking to the bank, post office, restaurants, stores, park, golf, beach, um, without the problems generally associated with the downtown environment. Too much density and intensity, traffic congestion, and the resulting air pollution, noise, light pollution. Um, I purchased my home based on the height of the majority of the buildings in my neighborhood and the downtown, not based on the exceptions. Any height approved in the LDRs this evening um, in this area above the height that was passed in the Charter Amendment will result in additional residential units and or commercial space, traffic congestion at intersections that will result in increased vehicular traffic through my neighborhood, down my street. Um, we have a lot of speeding already. There'll be more cars that won't want to wait at the lights and will come down my street. There'll be noise from commercial, more commercial establishments, delivery trucks, trash trucks picking up dumpsters, and light from upper story um, windows um, above the natural tree line that I'll be able to see from my house. Um, my property will be negatively impacted and my quality of life will be degraded. Um, if the people's vote is not upheld, I would like the LDRs to still reflect the spirit of what the people voted for and the heights that they voted on. And you can still do that, regardless of whether the Charter Amendment um, is nullified. And I would encourage you and ask that you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Mayer, followed by Suzanne Squire. Good evening, my name is Ryan Meyer. I live and live at and own 609 Second Avenue South. I also own 610 Second Avenue South, which is a rental property. My properties are two blocks from the downtown corridor. Uh, in my neighborhood, the downtown Jewel, I observe that most of the houses have neither garages nor driveways, including my rental. In the evening hours, on-street parking is filled to capacity. During public events like parades and the street painting festival, the parking is impossible, the streets are unnavigable, and the number of traffic accidents increases exponentially. As an investor in this neighborhood, I welcome progress. However, I think the commission places the cart before the horse when it places the importance of the size of buildings over developing the infrastructure to support such growth. I would ask the commission to focus their energy and the city's money to addressing obvious issues of decay, then bring us your creative development ideas. These were my thoughts when I chose to vote yes in the March vote regarding this issue. Since the yes vote prevailed in March, I would ask the commission to respect the outcome of that vote. Thank you. Hi. 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 Find the chambers, please. Katie McGivern, followed by Laurel Decker. Oh, I'm sorry, Suzanne Square. I, <laughs> sorry, I keep turning down the card accidentally before thinking it's over. Sorry. Suzanne Squire, 805 North Lakeside Drive. I'm asking you to do the right thing and obey the law and not to pass this. I'm quite frightened because I'm looking at our Declaration of Independence out there and it talks about acts of pretended legislation. You are basically saying that you're morally superior, smarter than us, and you know better than us. When we have a lawyer that we pay a pretty penny to that doesn't understand that there is what's called the supremacy clause in the Constitution, which guarantees us a Republican or a representative form of government. The Second Amendment wraps religion, assembly, petition, press, and speech. So you're basically saying that you're smarter than even the Bill of Rights, which in the preamble declares that it is a limited document, the Constitution, and that we, the people, have the final say. And you are not allowing that. I have never seen such censorship and propaganda that you would dare to stop each person and correct us as if we are two. Please remember who pays your salary. Now what you're going to put through in these land development regulations are not what the people wanted. I personally was against it because you declared three out of all five could change my property rights. 
We haven't even looked at property relationships. Your land development regulations not only have trademarks in them, which one of you should recuse yourselves from the vote, it talks about the theory of sustainability. There's a Harvard paper that says that you don't even look at the actions of human beings. And I'll say it again for the last time. Mr. Andres Duane, I call him Andy Dandy, said, you are going to stack us and pack us because we see the way you go after grant money, and that's all you're going to get. Westchester, New York is being sued by HUD, and they have stipulations now where not even you guys get to decide what the zoning is. HUD decides. They have no authority. They're part of the federal government. So guys, we don't need to be sued, and please don't even try to correct me, because you know I know better than you. The Tea Party, we were all British citizens. We had enough. We were not the enemy. Thank you. Katie McGibbon, followed by Laurel Decker. Hi, Katie McGibbon. I live at 2121 Collier Avenue. I have to agree with uh, uh, Suzanne. I've been coming to these meetings since 2005, and never in my entire life have I seen a meeting conducted in such a manner or the citizens put through such a process and lecture. We are your boss. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking a little loud. We are your boss. How dare you stop after every comment and correct us. It's intimidating enough for people to come up here and talk to you. On March 12, 2013, a majority of Lake Worth voters approved the Charter Amendment Ordinance 2012-30. Approval of this proposed LDRs will be in direct violation of the Lake Worth Charter and will be against the law. And I have spoken to lawyers that have differing opinions on what the law is from our city attorney. If these LDRs are passed, I will be affected any time that I try to go near or drive through the downtown area. My tax rate will also be affected. The fact that this commission has refused to recognize a majority of voters in the city makes all citizens residing within Lake Worth affected parties. Again, approval of the proposed LDRs will be in direct violation of the Lake Worth Charter and will be against the law. When an election happens, certain things have to be done by city staff. They were not done in this case. Again, I know lawyers all over the state of Florida. I know land use attorneys all over the state of Florida. Their opinions on this very issue differs. And again, you have a lot of nerve running a meeting in this manner where every person is corrected Thank you. A lot of nerve. <laughs> Laurel Decker, followed by Lynn Anderson. I'm in the same lifeboat as Wes. Um, my name is Lori Decker. I live at 519 North D Street, which is within four blocks of the area covered by the Charter Amendment Ordinance 2012-30, approved by a majority of Lake Worth voters on March 12, 2013. The heights proposed in the LDRs will increase density in my neighborhood and exacerbate traffic problems that we are already experiencing that I've come here and complained about. Lake Worth PD measured 1,800 vehicles traveling on D Street in a 24-hour period several years ago. This is a residential street that cannot support the additional traffic that would be created by allowing a four-story residential complex that is allowed under the proposed LDRs. This type of development would be visible from my property and would adversely affect me because traffic would funnel north on D Street, a single lane, one-way street, to access the interstate right past my property. Um, something else I would like to point out, uh, I hear over and over again about how the new LDRs will protect the downtown. They'll, they'll protect us from the heights that we're afraid of. Uh, everything is all built in. And what is built into the LDRs that you're going to finally approve tonight um, is a section uh, named Residential Plan Developments Special Requirements. Um, RPDs may be created in any residential district. Uh, plan 
developments may be located in any mixed-use district, with the exception of the neighborhood commercial district. And in case anybody's wondering, the neighborhood commercial district are these two very tiny, itsy-bitsy little squares on the map, one right here and one right here. So that's the only place that a planned development is not allowed to take place. It can take place anywhere else in the city. Uh, really? Well, a planned development includes relaxing or waiving of height, setback, lot dimensions, and lot area requirements anywhere as an incentive. So you've built into the LDRs exactly what you're telling us they are protecting us from. Thanks to Watch. Did you want to address? The minimum area for residential plan development is five acres. So you have to have an assemblage of at least five acres. It accepts it. I, I can't go into all the things that happened in the past were not done right. Um, well, you know what, let's discuss it at the end. Okay. Lenny Anderson, go ahead. I followed by David Sims, and then we're going to take a break because there's a huge stack of cards here. Hi. I need about uh, Lynn Anderson, 2204 Lake Osborne Drive. Um, I moved here in the 1950s and came back here as an adult when I was 35. I live minutes from the downtown. Other than the section east of Federal with a handful of taller buildings, our downtown has always consisted of one to two story buildings until the controversial Lucerne condo was built, a building that most people objected to. It was too high compared to the adjacent buildings. We didn't get to vote on that decision, but we did legally amend our charter on March 12, 2013 on Pikes. We who live in Lake Worth are all affected by this commission's decision to not honor the vote of the people. Charter Amendment Ordinance 2012-30 in an election held in Lake Worth on March 12, winning by 55.86% uh, of the vote. Many of us bought here because we have been a low-rise city and a low-rise downtown for 100 years. We did not move to Fort Lauderdale or some city with tall buildings. We invested in a small town with a small town feel. All those who voted to have four stories in our downtown are affected because this commission did not honor what the people voted on on that election. When democracy is stomped on by politicians, it affects all of us. Politicians are elected to do what the people has told them to do by the vote. It's contemptuous and it's disrespectful. Mr. Torcivia, I think you're a wonderful guy. I disagree with you on this. And the mayor, really, most of what you said tonight was really rude. Everyone in this small six mile square city are affected by this because you are ignoring the vote. So I oppose Ordinance 2013-34, adopting higher heights in the land development <coughs> regulations than what the people voted on in the charter change. David Sims. My name is David Sims. I'm in 715 North L Street. I live seven blocks north of the downtown corridor area uh, that was affected by Ordinance 2012-30 which was voted in by the majority of our voters on March 12, 2013. I like living in Lake Worth and I like going downtown because it's a place that has <clears throat> the small town feel, the old Florida feel, that's kind of more and more rare in Florida these days. It's a lot of build towns that weren't all, always high rise are now high rise. Um, Towns like West Palm Beach have lots of really, really high buildings. It's nice to have a place to go where I can still have that you know, small town, old town feel. Um, I'm concerned that if you do not abide by the ordinance on building heights that we voted into on March 12, 2013, and you pass LVRs that go above that, that go above those limits that the character of the town wouldn't be quite the same if we had higher buildings. And I would be impacted because it wouldn't be a place I would, could go anymore 
to uh, experience a small town feel. We're going to take a brief break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you.